When it comes to improving one's performance on the server, it is safe to say that there is pretty much nothing that gamers won't, at the very least, try. From peripherals and aim trainers to loungewear and even unregulated cognitive enhancer drugs, you will run out of money before you run out of options to supposedly level up your game. But while you can spend hours searching out the latest and greatest in gamer tech, there is still one unfortunate, unavoidable reality you must confront. Eventually, you're gonna have to play the game. Because cheaters, feeders, and kids without their monitors turned on aside, for some people, sitting down at their computer and queuing ranked isn't as easy as clicking a button. For some, the very idea of playing ranked makes them, well, anxious. It was really hard for me to just want to like queue and like get a loss or whatever. I, I was really like scared of like losing and like looking bad. And then I'd lose a game of Brood War and my brain would be like, you're not worthy of love. We have a lot of people who don't have the training or the background or the exposure to be able to cope with the anxiety that comes with that. So today we're taking a look at ladder anxiety. That feeling of dread when deciding whether or not to queue up for a game or that surge of emotion right in the middle of a game. Why does it happen? And are there things you can do to either mitigate or eliminate this feeling? Okay, so before we start talking about ladder anxiety, please be sure to check out our brand new streaming initiatives at twitch.tv slash the score esports. We're gonna be hanging out, playing games, doing watch parties and just generally chilling. So be sure to tune in. It'll be a good time, I promise. So when you think about it, video games have essentially made the phenomenon of performance anxiety something that anyone, anywhere can access instantly at home from their desks right away. Yay. Because yeah, it obviously isn't something that's just limited to video games. Athletes have been struggling with performance anxiety since like the very beginning of professional grass touching. I just didn't get it because it's hard to understand something you can't see or touch. So when I got to college and began my career as a division one athlete, I never thought I would struggle with these issues. Yet many athletes do struggle. And while these sports do take place in the <clears throat> physical <laughs> realm, mental fortitude can be just as important. So elite athletes, coaches and the people who surround athletes know very well the importance of sports psychology and they're beginning to embrace it. So that was my mental switch. It was like an actor getting ready for a film. You gotta put yourself in that cage. When you're in that cage, you are that character. And some players can actually go years without any sort of struggle before finally hitting that wall. I just remember not quite feeling right. Uh... I remember mean, we went through a few plays, there was a timeout, I got to the huddle, and that's when I just, I felt something that I had never felt before. I, could, I couldn't catch my breath. You know, I felt like my mind was completely out. Athletes often have a lot of lead up to actually playing or competing. During that time, they can draw on techniques to moderate the anxiety they may feel or engage in rituals that help them get into the right mental space. Many do exactly that, whether it's a weird pseudoscientific medical practice or just a good luck ritual. Gotta have the high socks, got it from my father, you know, seen a picture of him in a yearbook, uh, gotta have a headband, gotta eat some form of chicken before every game, and the night before each game, I sleep in the opposing team's game shorts. But queuing into a ranked match just takes the press of a button, a lot easier than asking an NBA pro for their shorts. And in a lot of games, the ranked queue will be as fast, if not faster, than a casual one. Well, I'm very nervous right now. We will try and attempt to overcome. Here we go. I click the button where there is no turning back. All of this is to say that while there might be a lot of similarities, there's got to be some differences too. And some ways to help improve your mental game that you don't need to be a superstar athlete to incorporate. 
So to discuss where the anxiety comes from and how much we can learn from traditional sports, we turned once more to Dr. Madison Klarkowski, a professor of computer science at the University of Saskatchewan who specializes in computer-human interaction. There has actually been some uh, research examining the differences between sports like anxiety in a physical sports match like in hockey or in football versus anxiety uh, in esports and not terribly many differences emerge. It's actually a pretty similar experience. Now, sure, compared to physical sports, there is an overall lower risk of injury in esports. And so fear of a new injury or of aggravating an old one is less of a factor. Your own self-efficacy, um, perception of opponents, ability, um, and importance of match, everything, that is all pretty similar between sports and esports, it's more parallels than there are differences. So we, I think we can turn pretty readily to sports research, sports science, um, and kind of see if we can apply those findings to esports. On the esports side of things, we started to see a surge in players talking openly about ranked or ladder anxiety with the massive rise of StarCraft. Brood War was incredibly popular. So for some players, it was their first brush with a ranked grind. Plus, StarCraft is a deep game, played mostly online, and a 1v1 RTS competition leaves you with no one to blame but yourself. Frankly, it's kind of intimate. You know, I'm just kind of looking forward to when she feels ready, you know. Ready for what? Well, to like, you know, 1v1 means zero hour. Yeah, I can't imagine anything more intimate. Given all that, StarCraft was the perfect candidate to provoke these feelings of anxiety in players, giving rise to the term ladder anxiety. If you followed Brood War or StarCraft 2, then you probably heard the term at some point. And it was the subject of a lot of discussion because it was clearly something that affected a lot of players. And I actually was someone that had ladder anxiety when I was in StarCraft. So it was really hard for me to just want to like queue and like get a loss or whatever. I, I was really like scared of like losing and like looking bad. Um, so actually that kind of helps because I learned how to like look at replays and like find other methods to like get better. And uh, it kind of like honed me in on the process of, of improvement. But today you don't have to play StarCraft to obsess over the decision to queue up or not. For what feels like the past decade, nearly every competitive game that has released with multiplayer has had some species of ranked matchmaking. By having something that is competitive with stakes that is accessible to everyone, we have a lot of people who don't have the training or the background or the exposure to this format um, to be able to cope with the anxiety that comes with that. That obsession is fascinating though. Because on the one hand, you'll have a lot of players who will simply avoid situations in which they may be forced to not only confront other players in a competitive environment, but their criticism. You needn't look further than the incredible popularity of StarCraft II's versus AI mode to see that some people would rather just chill out and have a fun game with a friend. And hey, there is nothing wrong with that. But in general, are you happy with like the amount of players that you that you see? In, in Tremendously Cold? happy. Mm -hmm. um, we had some goals in our head, you know, and I was being very optimistic, and those bars are even shattered. The data is showing right now that in certain months, more people are playing co-op than multiplayer. That is, unless you, like many people, have a sort of innate desire to test your own abilities and limits. Or, at the very least, to see yourself improve a bit. You could argue that sport, and by extension eSport, is all just one big manifestation of this desire. So for a lot of people, those two things conflict. You want to test yourself and see how good you really are, then you want to improve on that. But you may feel anxious about the entire experience. One term for this anxiety is competitive state anxiety, and it can affect both your performance in-game and your willingness to practice in the first place. And, believe it or not, this is something that even the best sports and esports competitors also grapple with. Well, I can't say, you know, definitively, you know, X percentage of people um, experience competition anxiety or ranked anxiety or ladder anxiety. I can say that it isn't unique 
to um, players that might have a lower skill level, but that people across all um, skill levels, all expertise can um, experience it. So why does this feeling happen? Well, obviously there are a ton of reasons, but let's talk about the most common ones. The first thing to talk about is the concept of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a big one, and self-efficacy is your uh, perception of your ability to achieve your goals or perform at a adequate level. And if you don't have that requisite level of self-efficacy, if you don't have that requisite belief in yourself to perform at that level, then that is going to lead to anxiety about competing. It might seem like a rather intuitive concept, but the fact is, that for many of us, we don't think explicitly about our own self-perception. And even trying to think about it can be hampered by other barriers like mood. Negative moods such as sadness, fatigue, or frustration can not only increase your own expectations of your own performance, but will simultaneously reduce self-efficacy so you will expect more from yourself while believing that you can't actually do as much as you need to do, like your standards for yourself will raise and you don't think you'll be able to meet those standards. Even something like others believing that you are likely to fail can impact your own self-efficacy. Look, you probably have an idea of how good of a player you are. You might even associate that idea with an in-game rank. Like you might say to someone, hey, I'm at least a gold player, or I would be MG if my utility was better. The thing is, when you play a ranked mode, the system is designed to put you in a game where you are playing with and being pitted against players of in and around the same skill level as you. Now, that is not to say that it always succeeds. Obviously. People don't understand improvement or how to learn. Seriously? Losing in, in silver when it's clearly plat MMR? Losing in silver, bro? <laughs> oh my god, your challenger player? The goal shouldn't be to fixate on a specific rank or skill level, but instead to learn from your games, improve, and just enjoy the ride. After all, if your only goal is to get diamond and keep it, then your only fail-safe option once you get there is to never play again, right? Like, at least until your rank decays. You're gonna lose some games. That's inevitable. And ultimately, listen, I'm here to tell you, whatever you are in your day-to-day -day life, you are not your MMR. I'd try to win a game of Brood War and I'd win and people would go, man, you're good, Sean. And I'd be like, yeah. And then I'd lose a game of Brood War and my brain would be like, you're not worthy of love. <laughs> <laughs> you are not really your, your ladder rank. You're not really your StarCraft skill unless you're a pro gamer, okay? And if you're a pro gamer, it's your job and you just have to queue on the ladder. But like, if you don't play StarCraft well, it doesn't mean anything about like your intelligence or anything. Another factor could be anxiety over social conflict. You could be afraid that you'll be attacked either by your opponents or your teammates, depending on the game. You could make a mistake and be criticized heavily for it. This feels like a very common factor for people because ultimately we play games to have fun. And if that process of learning and improving is made less fun by others, then it makes total sense that you'd want to avoid that if possible. This fear is also constantly reinforced by our surroundings. I'm done, I'm sick of this shit. F you stream snipers, F you go through. You chat. I quit streaming and I quit this game. But social pressure goes even deeper than that. And now the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Oh, you thought I was only the guy who knows what he's talking about when it comes to tech? I may have a computer science degree, but not only did I take sports psychology and coaching classes during my undergrad, but I was also a varsity athlete and team captain to boot. Who's the nerd now? It's still me. Fair point. The pressure from teammates, opponents, and even viewers in our ever more connected gaming world is sort of inescapable at this point. You know, they get pressured and they start to think more slowly and explicitly and 
that actually leads to detriments in performance because you have slower reactions, you're not thinking as automatically, you're double, you know, you're questioning yourself. Basketball players slapping hands after a missed free throw or Rainbow Six Pros fist bumping after a lost round are both ways for teams to try and dissipate some of this pressure. We've mostly been talking about the mental impact, but have you ever been queuing up for a game or in the middle of one and realized that you're feeling the physical effects? Things like an elevated heart rate, maybe some rapid breathing, even cold or sweaty hands. These symptoms are sometimes called somatic anxiety, and left unchecked, they can amplify the impact to your performance even more. Your physiological response to um, anxiety can actually kind of act as a feedback loop and um, make your anxiety kind of worse, right? So I would recommend like if you are having those physiological signs, if you are, if you do have clammy hands, racing heart, etc., to try and focus on um, rectifying those physiological responses before you try to tackle diving into a ranked match. Like have a have a cup of tea, um, sit down, try and kind of physically calm yourself down before you jump in because otherwise it'll just kind of feed into itself. Physiological symptoms are a pretty solid indicator that you're past a level of stress that is going to help motivate you to perform. One of the core elements in helping to build up your tolerance for stress is your confidence levels. Your perception of a stressor as being out of your control is what begins to overcharge your anxiety. Even if something really is out of your control, confidence in yourself can help direct your focus back to what you can control. This is why techniques like visualization and that thing boomers are always telling you about experience are invaluable in helping competitors manage those high stress moments. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. So how can we eliminate, or at the very least, just manage these feelings? Well, for one, you can ease yourself into the match. Sit down, take a deep breath, put some music on, and just center yourself while you run some deathmatch, aimbots, retakes, whatever. That said, we don't need to completely eliminate these anxieties. In fact, there's evidence to suggest that we might not want to. Some athletes actually cite anxiety as being a motivating factor or a factor that helps them perform in sports. Reframing thinking, like instead of perceiving um, failures as uh, failures, perceiving failures instead as an opportunity for growth and an opportunity to learn about things. The next time you feel a stress response, remember, it's not a bad thing. It's simply your body helping you rise to the challenge. So it's more about moderating these anxieties. And there are some common strategies you can try that are backed up by the research. And I would also suggest setting smaller goals to kind of encourage that sense of self-efficacy of achievement. Um, so rather than, you know, thinking, I'm going to win this match, I'm going to top frag, think, you know, I'm going to calm really well, I'm going to calm my lineups really well, I'm going to calm my flashes really well. That's my goal for this match. So one of the ways that you can improve uh, domain self-efficacy, and again, self-efficacy is, you know, very strongly uh, associated with competitive state anxiety. One of the things that you can do to improve your domain self-efficacy is um, experience mastery and experience precarious learning. Madison points out that it might actually be possible to carry your feelings of mastery from a game you are confident in, or just are confident watching, to the game that you are anxious about playing. So this isn't something that I've had the opportunity to test, but what I suspect is that if you are able to experience mastery directly before queuing for a ranked game or for a queuing for a, a, a competition or a qualifier or something like that, is to play another video game that you are confident in, that you feel good about, that you feel like you can perform really well in. There is some literature to support that simply watching someone else exhibit mastery, like a pro player on Twitch, can influence your own self-efficacy positively. Listen, statistically, you're probably not a pro. And the reality is that most of us don't have blinged out Liquipedia pages. So it's sort of natural that we would maybe be a little more prone to beat ourselves up about our performance. And I think that's okay. You don't have to be amazing at the game to reduce anxiety around um, playing, around queuing up for ranked. But most importantly, don't perceive failure, don't perceive mistakes as this kind of end or horrible thing to happen. If you can reframe how you view these mistakes as learning opportunities or opportunities for innovation, opportunities for growth, that will help as well. Ultimately, ladder anxiety isn't really going anywhere because competition isn't going anywhere. 
The hope is that with a new perspective and having been able to frame maybe your own anxiety in a new light, pressing that ranked button will just come a little bit easier. You can feel awful about yourself anywhere. Ever wanted to hate yourself? Ever wanted to hate yourself? League of Legends. Facebook comments are like fucking child's play, man. Let me introduce you to a fellow by the name of Yasuo. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>